this is John Cole with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today another exciting episode for you. Coming at you from my beautiful backyard garden on a beautiful spring day. Summer's almost here. Hopefully you guys got your gardens planted out yet. My garden's been planted out for a little bit, but I've still got some areas to plant out in my garden. But today I want to make a video for you guys on a so subject that's actually not often talked about enough, in my opinion, in gardening is eating your flowers. Yes eating not just like standard edible flowers like I got over there, I got some marigolds and I got some pansies and nasturtiums, but eating the flowers of the fruits and vegetables and even herbs you guys are growing. So what I thought I'd do in this episode is actually go around my yard and uh, share with you guys some of the flowers that I like to eat in my garden at this time of year. Now I do want to let you guys know that I want to encourage you guys to, you know, besides just eating the fruits and the vegetables and eating the herbs, enjoying the herbs that you guys are growing, to also eat their flowers. The flowers are more nutritious than the vegetable in many cases. The flowers may contain vitamins like vitamin A, C, and E, also things like beta carotene, anthocyanidins, they also have a special plant phytonutrients that may not be in the vegetables such as the uh, special uh, pigments or the colors in the flowers and in addition many flowers also come with pollen when you eat them and this is what the bees would collect so we would eat bee pollen it's not really bee pollen bee collected the pollen but it's really plant pollen and we could get this own pollen if we harvest the flowers ourselves and for this reason I'm going to make in this video so you guys could know which ones you guys could eat and which ones you guys should eat and hopefully more of the world will start eating some of the edible flowers. Now that being said, if you just stop at the shop, if you shop at the store, the farmer's market or the grocery store, the health food store, you'll probably never find these flowers. It's only for those of you guys that are growing food, you will have these flowers and sometimes even curse. Oh man, the plant went to flower. I don't got the stuff anymore. Well, guess what? Now you got the flowers. Enjoy it. And after you have the flowers for a little bit, guess what? The plant's going to make seeds. So collect and save your seeds like before the birds get them so you could plant and uh, regrow them for the following year. In any case, let's go ahead and go around my garden and I'm going to show you guys and eat some of the edible flowers this time of year. So the first edible flower I'd like to show you guys is actually right here. This is planted amongst my uh, peppers. But in between the peppers, I planted radishes. Some of them actually have gone to flower since I've been traveling and not keep being able to keep up with all the radishes that have been harvested. Be sure to check my past episodes of a video on how I preserve my radishes and I make a lactic acid fermented pickled radishes. I had some today, they are delicious. Anyways, uh, when your radish gets more mature and old, this can happen very fast within 45 days, maybe 60 days. Uh, they make these little beautiful flowers. So these, the flowers, on most of them are white. Uh, these ones are actually like, uh, if you look at that, uh, like a yellow purple. I don't know if you guys could see that in the camera. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, white and purple. <laughs> but uh, the petals are edible as is the center, the little uh, yellow part, and that's where the pollen is. You just eat the whole thing. Now the funny thing is, the flowers in most cases taste like the food crop that you're growing, but a lot more mellow and sometimes sweet and sometimes more fragrant or aromatic or spicy. And so you never know what you're gonna get. So I really enjoy uh, picking my flowers and eating them, but more importantly, you know, going around and like harvesting a bunch of flowers just to add to the top of my salads to not only make them look prettier, but also make them more nutritious. Anyways, next let's go ahead into the back of my garden and show you guys a fruit flower that I'm eating next. So next I want to show you guys another flower that you guys may be growing if you have citrus trees. These are my kumquat trees right here. You guys can see, if you look close, I got kumquats on them. They're starting to ripen up, but uh, the plant is also going through its uh, bud and flower set stage again. I really love these guys, they're really productive. Anyways, uh, here is a little, oops, I'm losing the leaves. <laughs> All the petals are falling off. Well, this was a uh, <laughs> kumquat flower. Mmm. Oh my god. That's insane. Let's see if I can find another one. Like, the petals dropped off before I could eat them. I think that was like the only one that was open. Anyways, you can eat the petals and the, the middle and everything. 
I just got the middle because the petals dropped off before I got in my mouth. They're quite fragile. But man, that actually tastes like a kumquat. So yes, yeah, citrus flowers, also edible. And if you did have apple trees, the flowers on the apples, as well as things like the pears, they're also edible too. That being said, for every flower you pluck on one of these guys, you may be giving up a fruit. But in the case of me, where I have so many flowers, you know, it's probably gonna be all right just picking a few uh, flowers because I'm sure I'll have really good fruit set anyways. Oh, one of my favorite flowers of fruits to eat are the pineapple guavas. So I don't just pick the whole flower, I just pick the petals. They are quite delicious. So the next edible flower you guys could eat is actually right here. It's these uh, little yellow flowers right here. And these uh, yellow flowers are actually from my collard greens. And we'll eat that. Hmm. I mean, to me they taste like collard greens, but way more mild. So this is especially important to get your kids to eat the flowers of the greens you want them to eat because it gives them like a little sampling, a little trial of what it's gonna taste like at full strength. And of course, kids, they're gonna to love to eat the flowers. Yeah, I love the flowers so much. And yeah, normally as gardeners, you wanna clip this off so it tries to make more leaves and maybe I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the flowers of anything like collard greens, kale, broccoli, cabbage, all the cruciferous family plants, they're all edible, so enjoy. So the next edible flower I'm gonna share with you guys today is right here. It's a little dandelion that just uh, sprouted on its own right here. And this is not quite a full dandelion flower that's opened up yet, but the dandelion, even though it is a weed, but you don't smoke this weed, you eat it. <laughs> you could eat the root, you could eat the leaves, you could eat the stems, and of course you could eat the flowers, whether they're open or not. I personally like to just uh, you know pull out the nice little petals in here, and they're nice and orange. I mean yellow, <laughs> and eat them. Now, dandelion flowers, they're not necessarily the best flowers to eat. I suppose they kind of taste like the dandelions, which actually most people don't like so much. But dandelions, they are a bitter green. Very important for you guys, especially for those of you guys that drink, or maybe drink too much soda. <laughs> they could do, no both those could do numbers on your liver, and dandelions can help you detox your liver. That's definitely a good thing. Anyways, let's. Flip the camera around, show you guys the next fruit flower you guys could eat. So the next flower you guys could eat is right here sitting on my trellis. There's one right here and also there's one over here. Now, I don't normally do this, but I'm doing one for you guys for the video today. These are cucumber flowers. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pluck this cucumber flower off and uh, check it out. It's a nice, huge cucumber flower. Let's see if it'll even fit like right behind my ear. <laughs> I don't know, is it in there? Hi, this is John Kohler with Growing Your Greens. Oh wait, all right, getting distracted. All right, so anyways, a cucumber flower, totally edible, totally delicious. It's rare that I eat them, but bottoms up. Mmm. That's quite delicious. Kind of reminds you of eating like borage leaves or borage flowers. Tastes mildly like a cucumber. Uh, not quite as watery as a cucumber, but good nonetheless. But yes, yet another flower you guys could eat. You know, I want you guys to have fun and play in the garden. And especially play with the flowers. That's all right for you guys, too. Here's more of an uncommon flower that I have been eating for a while now. I don't eat these in any quantity, but just one here and there. I really like this flower for its really dark, rich pigments, right? And uh, this flower is actually off my Canna Adalis or Akira, which makes an edible uh, tuberous root you guys could eat, either raw or cooked. And uh, let's see here, we're going to go ahead and try to uh, pick off a nice flower right here. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of bugs on my flowers here, so we're going to have to blow them off. I don't want to eat no bugs. All right, there's one nice flower off my edible Canna. Oh, I blew the flower away. <laughs> all right, now that I've blown it all off, we're gonna go ahead and eat. <laughs> hmm. This flower is kind of fibrous. Not like a super good flavor. Probably tastes kind of like the tuber down below. It's just kind of like neutral, but pretty fibrous. Yep. It's a flower you could eat. I probably wouldn't eat like a ton of them, but uh, they're edible nonetheless. Probably good to like add a few to a salad amongst all the other flowers. 
you guys are harvesting for your salads now that you know which ones you could eat. So the next flower is a flower I know you guys could eat. <laughs> it's right here. Basically, this is my uh, purple broccoli that I grew. It uh, actually made the broccoli uh, flower, which was unopened, and then you buy it and you eat it, right? That's what broccoli is. I also encourage you guys to eat your broccoli leaves. But then after it makes the broccoli head that we're all used to and know and love, uh, the little head will actually open up wide and it'll start to make these little flowers here. So let's see if I can find uh, one that's in halfway decent shape. And uh, here's one of the uh, broccoli flowers, just a little wee delicate uh, yellow white thing down the hatch. And this one tastes like broccoli, believe it or not. <laughs> Not a lot of food, but uh, cool nonetheless. Yeah, once again, all the cruciferous family vegetables, you can eat their flowers. So the next flower you guys could eat is a twofer. <laughs> I grew like three different varieties of arugula in this bed next door here. And we got a wild arugula, well, like over here. And then over inside, we actually had some standard arugula. And then over here, we actually were growing the wasabi arugula that actually I let to go to a flower and set seed. So I got all the seed sacks or the seed packs or whatever. I got to collect the seeds from. They're actually quite small. But we got the flowers of the arugula. They're some of my favorite flowers of the whole brassica family of plants. Here's one right here. This is, a, this is your standard arugula flower. See how that looks? Like it's white and it has like these little veins. And then uh, let's see here. They're not quite open, but uh, here's one of a more wild arugula. It's like small and yellow. So see the difference? We're gonna go ahead and eat the uh, white flower. Mmm. I love the white arugula flowers. It reminds you of like a barbecue or like a smoke type flavor. And now for the uh, smaller uh, yellow wild arugula. And that has a little bit of faint sweetness to it. So it's a uh, Big contrast to the standard arugula white flowers. They're both delicious, nonetheless. So the next flower that I'm gonna be eating is right over here. <laughs> and uh, this guy, it basically makes a, like one plant, makes like a ton of little flowers. So what I like to do is harvest the whole uh, top here. And I'll like pull off all the little flowers and just basically chop them up and put them into my super salads. These guys are actually onion flowers from a standard onion bulb, uh, whether it's coming from an onion bulb, a leek, scallions, or even the garlic, all the allium family of flowers, including society garlic, which are actually the really cool, um, uses an ornamental uh, purple flowers, are all edible. And I really like the flowers, the onion flowers. You could eat them they have like a faint sweetness, but also that onion or garlic punch. If you guys are a chef, you guys should totally be using the bolting flowers in your creations to wow, you know, the people that are eating your food. <laughs> They're amazing. They add, for such a small thing, they add really a nice punch of flavor in your mouth. So the next flower you guys can eat is right here next to me. You guys can eat the basil flowers. Yes, even if your basil is going to flower, you know, you could uh, pinch these guys off and eat them. Now these are just like the buds, they're not quite open in flowers, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. But pretend these are flowers, you could totally eat them, and you could totally eat the buds. They kind of taste like basil. You know, they're a lot stronger, so if you're using this in recipes, like don't use as much, because you'll be overpowered with the flavor. What I like to do, I just like to come and basically top off my plants when I'm uh, preparing food and use all the tops and let the plant uh, you know, uh, make more leaves so this will keep my basil productive for longer instead of uh, going and setting flowers sooner. And uh, yeah, I would use this in a recipe, but today we're just gonna mouth it. Mm. I love basil. I think I'll have some pesto for dinner. <laughs> so the next edible flowers you guys could eat are from herbs, or in this case an herb. Uh, these are cilantro flowers, so they smell really delicious and they look really cool. They remind me of like baby's breath. So if you're putting like an, a floral bouquet, making an edible floral bouquet for your sweetie, hey, use some cilantro flowers. Looks like baby's breath. They look really cool. 
and they're just like white little bunches of flowers, and we just eat the whole thing. Mmm. You get a little bit of pollen, you get a, bit, a little bit of cilantro flavor, it's really good. I think one of the things I'm going to try to do is uh, make a cilantro guac cilantro flour or guacamole. So instead of using cilantro because it's all pretty much bolted and have these small leaves, I'm just going to use a bunch of flowers. I think it might work, but I don't think I want to use uh, too many because once again, you know, uh, these ones are a bit mild, but has a little bit different texture. A little bit of a grainy texture actually. Anyways, let's go ahead and move to the uh, next flower you guys could also eat and it may surprise you. So the next flower you guys could eat are sunflowers. <laughs> yes. If you go around the edges, you can just pick off these little petals on it and it won't affect the uh, seed production. And that's why I'm growing these sunflowers, not only for the beauty, but for the seeds. But also the petals, nice and richly pigmented. And after we uh, blow off the bugs, we're going to eat. Mm. Once again, like the Ikira flowers, it's pretty fibrous, but nonetheless, they got some good color in them. And that's why I'm eating them. For the nutrition, baby. So the next edible flowers are probably one of my favorites in the whole garden. It's actually right here if you guys look at it. If you guys could see that too good. But uh, this is actually the bronze fennel. And uh, you can eat the little flower buds. Look like this. Actually on Fru Fru restaurants and chefs, well, they'll take actually fennel pollen. You could buy fennel pollen. Why not eat the flowers to get the pollen and all that other deliciousness of the flower? Just eat that off. Upon initial chew, you get a release of that licorice flavor. I used to love the black licorice when I was a kid. I won't eat that stuff anymore because it's full of like all kind of chemicals and artificial sugars and whatnot. But this stuff is sweet, tastes like licorice, and is super delicious. It's great to add to salads, eat fresh to freshen your breath before a hot date <laughs> or not out with your girlfriend or husband or wife or boyfriend and yeah super delicious let's go ahead and uh, go to the next herb of the flower you could also eat so the next flower as you guys could eat is right here as you guys can see got mass abundance of them <laughs> now am I letting them go to flower so they can make seed or is it because I'm a lazy gardener and haven't had time to prune that answer you guys may never know. <laughs> I think it's part of both. I like collecting seeds. I like letting seeds drop. They'll land wherever they're gonna land and then I'm gonna have a lot of celery come up next year without me lifting one finger, which I like. But anyways, uh, this is a celery flowers and these celery flowers, yes, they're also edible. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off and we're gonna go ahead and eat it. Mmm. Wow. Oh my God, like, Upon initial release or like uh, pressing, you can see if I shake it, like a lot of the palm will come off. Upon initial crush in your mouth, the flavors that are released, it's really you, you, it, unique sweetness. But then you're hit with like, like a drying celery taste. Definitely cool. I mean, adding like a whole bunch of these flowers to salad is really going to trip some people out. And I encourage you guys to do it. So the next edible flower I'm going to share with you guys is right here. As you guys can see, i got massive amounts of flowers right here. And this is my flat leaf parsley that went to flower. I think this was like one plant. My plants are quite happy here. And they make lots of flowers. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and pick this guy. Here's what it looks like right here. We're just going to go ahead and eat it. Mm. Right when you set it in your mouth, you can taste the pollen, it has a sweet flavor, and then you got like that strong parsley flavor. And this is especially strong if you're not used to eating the parsley. Like normally when I'd eat parsley as a garnish, like on my plate, when I go out to dinner, kind of tastes like that, but like maybe four times more stronger. Nowadays I just actually add parsley to my salads, and I love it. So, but nonetheless, this is still a bit stronger. Next, let's go ahead to another a parsley relative that has a much more mild flavor. So the parsley relative with a more mild flavor is right here, and it's celery. Hey, celery, does that rhyme with parsley? Not quite. But anyways, uh, the celery flower is right here once again. 
These flowers are also edible. They're like small and dainty. Mm. These ones I like a little bit more. Nonetheless, they have like a, a grainy texture to them. They're much more milder than the parsley, but you can still taste the parsley overtones. Uh, these are not necessarily, the parsley and the celery are not necessarily my first choice to add to salads. They're not quite as cool as the brassicas, but nonetheless, they're edible. And I encourage you guys to take advantage of them when they're flowering in your garden. So the next edible flower that you guys could eat only comes around one, one time a year. It's in the springtime and it's right here for me anyways. And this is the sage flowers. The hummingbirds like this, the hummingbirds moths like this, and John Kohler likes this as well. So we're just going to go ahead and go here and uh, pluck a flower out. And uh, that's what they look like right there. Other sages are also edible. I like the pineapple sage. What I like to do is right, go down to the white end tip and just uh, pinch off and suck. Hmm. If you're lucky, you're gonna get a little bit of that nectar that the hummingbirds go for. It's actually quite sweet and actually quite delicious. And then after you're done with the nectar, you got the little purple flower that you could eat. Hmm. Has a nice mild sage flavor. It's quite delicious too, and this one I definitely like more than the parsley and the uh, celery. So the next flower you guys can eat is right here. This is known as the bee balm flower. Posted a picture of this uh, recently on my Instagram. We'll go ahead and pick a small one. Now these are what they look like right there. Super beautiful, nice uh, purple flowers. We're just going to go ahead and pluck the whole bunch. These are nice and delicate. <laughs> and uh, then they go in the mouth. Mm. You got a little bit of that sweetness, much like the sage on the tips, and they are quite delicious. They taste kind of like oregano-y, for lack of a better word. They really taste like the bee balm, but for most people that never tasted bee balm, they taste kind of oregano-y. Oregano now the bee balm leaves, you could use them just like you would mint. Normally it's used for tea or spicing up uh, different soups and salads and whatnot. Don't use too many, they can get quite strong. Next, I want to share with you guys the last edible flower that I have my garden, and you actually might be surprised. So the last edible flower I want to show you guys today is right here, and you guys probably never seen this edible flower before. You know, this is only maybe the third time I have. What this is, this is actually the flower off of my Gynera Procumbens, also known as Longevity Spinach. Oops. <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's just like a little uh, orange, puffy flower. This is also edible. We're just gonna go ahead and pull the flower buds out. And look, it has like the little hair things so it could like blow in the wind. Mm. You could eat it. It's quite delicate and sweet. Oh, watch this. <laughs> Those are like the little bloid things on the day line. But yeah. Janier Pukumbin flowers, also very fun. Now, these only flower after like this, the full year. So they're like, I think they're like a biennial. It's like rare I've ever seen flower. Normally they're propagated by cuttings. I mean, starting to flower, go to seed. I'm gonna go ahead and try to, you know, plant the seeds, see if they'll set and take or see if they're sterile. I don't exactly know, but it'll be fun to learn. But yeah, Janier Pukumbin flowers. I mean, other ones that I didn't mention that I wasn't able, I saw earlier today, but maybe they're not in bloom at this time of day, which is later in the day. And it's always best to harvest your flowers early in the day, after, before the full sun, right when they open up, and then try to use them as soon as possible, because they don't like to like hang out too long. They expire really fast. But yeah, I was, oh, I was gonna do the Perslane flowers. Another really cool one, but I, I hunted around and didn't really see any. But, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, a lot of vegetable flowers are edible. Uh, don't eat any flower unless you know it's 100% edible. Do some online searches first. If I didn't include it in this video, definitely check it before you eat anything from your garden. You know, there are certain varieties of certain plants that actually the flowers are quite poisonous. So, you know, steer clear of those and just eat the ones that I share with you guys today. And of course, do your own research and look up more. I mean, I love the world of plants. I love the world of edible fruits, vegetables, and herbs. And yes, I even am a flower muncher. If you guys like this video, hey, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below uh, to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes that have coming out every three to four days. You never know where I'll be showing up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Be sure to share this video with others you think it could help so that they could start being a flower muncher too. And 
Flower Munchers Unite. Maybe I'll have my next t-shirt, Flower Munchers Unite. <laughs> And be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 1,100 episodes now. I'll share with you guys all aspects so that you guys can grow your own fruits, vegetables, herbs, and uh, even the flowers at home and enjoy them so that you and your family could be healthier because of it. Uh, so once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we got a very special guest. Benji Hi. <laughs> from uh, Benji Man TV. He's a chef and food lover. 